In Consumer Corner, we take a look at trends and products creating a buzz here in China. On today's show, we'll discuss year-end bonuses given out by Chinese companies. Chinese New Year, called Spring Festival in China, is the real dividing line in the Chinese calendar. It's not just a time for family, but it's also the pivot point for most companies doing business in China. During the holiday, huge numbers of migrants will come home, and many blue and white collar workers will take the opportunity to switch jobs. A good portion of that job switching comes right after, and often in response to another Chinese tradition, Nian Zhongjiang, year end bonuses. The performance based payments receive a great deal of attention from employers and employees, with the amount paid out often determining if someone decides to stay with a company. But after a down year for the Chinese economy, many are worrying that the bonuses given out in the weeks ahead are going to disappoint. In a nationwide poll of companies by Careers International, 58% of respondents said they plan to increase bonuses by up to 10%. But that claim by bosses runs directly counter to the results of a separate survey. A poll conducted by the Guangzhou Daily Online showed that 61% of respondents were told that because of the economic slowdown, they'd be receiving no bonus this year. A further 20% of respondents said that their bonus would likely drop by 20% from a year before, and just 11% were given the same level as last year. Polling data from different sources is a bit all over the place, but predictions of a drop in bonuses was supported by data from Taiha Consulting, showing that only 32% of 400 firms surveyed in central China plan to issue the bonuses at all. Many of those that did receive bonuses still managed to get paid out in a substantial way. Roughly 45% of recipients took home under 20,000 yuan, around $3,200, but another 36% took home between three and $16,000, a very large sum of money in China. A full 5% of bonus recipients in the survey hit the jackpot with bonuses of over 500,000 yuan, more than $80,000. As for which industries are making off with those monstrous bonuses, two leaders appear to be real estate and banking. With real estate sales picking up in the second half of the year, many firms have dramatically increased their bonuses for star salesmen. Chinese media reported on one Hangzhou realtor who raked in a 5 billion yuan bonus, roughly $800,000. That's a huge number, but it's in return for selling a full 695 million yuan of property that year. The Guangzhou Daily reports that average bonuses for high-level employees in the industry range from 50 to 100,000 yuan. Banks are also regulars when it comes to sky-high bonuses. Senior managers can often expect around 500,000 yuan from the headquarters, while customer managers usually take in under 100,000 yuan. Banks have also expanded the notion of bonus to include certain hidden benefits. One example is low interest loans that can save employees tens of thousands of dollars on home purchases for themselves. With Spring Festival just around the corner, the bonuses have been getting plenty of play on the Chinese internet. Whether it's complaining about one's own meager payouts or complaining about others' massive payouts, net users want to make their general dissatisfaction known. One Weibo poster called Mai Too wrote, Every time this subject is brought up, it's a major blow to my pride. Our company doesn't give out any bonuses. Instead, it gives us a New Year's gift, two hand towels. Poster Sui Feng Liu Liu echoed something out of the American political discourse, complaining about bonuses in the financial industry. How booming is the financial industry? An annual bonus of 200,000 yuan? As someone from the lower rungs of society, I make less than 2,000 yuan a month. How many years would I have to work just to make that much? I don't take home one cent. Another poster took aim at both real estate and state-owned enterprises. He wrote, It looks like real estate is truly a sunrise industry with great prospects for future development. Soaring prices and high trading volumes have done nothing but fatten property magnates and their minions while embittering us ordinary people. The Gini coefficient being far above the warning level has turned into a defining fact. The gap between rich and poor is clear here, and I don't know if in my lifetime we'll ever see a closing of gap in employee treatment by state-owned and private enterprises. Finally, one netizen tried to reframe the issue over who should be thanking who. She wrote, Year-end bonuses have been a hot issue recently, but after a year's work, the most important gauge for measuring your income isn't what you get in a bonus, but whether you've made a major contribution on a daily basis. That poster seems to be taking the employer's side, telling posters to ask not what their company can do for them, but what they can do for their company.